In this video tutorial, I will be showing you how to create an iPhone scroll effect for your Adobe Muse website. Uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, this is the, the website we'll be creating. Uh, so basically, as you scroll down this website, you see the image changes. Now this could be a very interesting iPhone app tutorial where you showcase your iPhone app and you show the different features of the app as the user scrolls the web page. You could have some text here on the right side uh, along with the picture, the corresponding picture to give a little tutorial. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Uh, I'm gonna go to Adobe Muse. I'm gonna open up Adobe Muse. I'm gonna go to File, New Site, and 960, all these settings are okay. Uh, I'm not concerned about high DPI images or retina images at the moment, so I'll just click OK. I'm going to click on the home page. Now the first thing I want to do is create uh, five panels or five rectangles. Uh, I'm going to create them at 650 pixels high because I want the image to, to change every 650 pixels and I want it to correspond with the right background or panel as I like to call it. Okay so uh, I'm going to do 650 here and they're going to be at 100% width and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. I'm going to take off the stroke over here. Uh, I'll just set it to none because we don't want a little border. And I'm going to set the fill color to that color right there. I'm going to have five different colors just so I can show you um, when the iPhone image changes. And you'll see it because it corresponds to the different color backgrounds. I'll make that a blue. Uh, let's make it that blue. Okay. I'm just copying and pasting these rectangles. And oh, we did that one, the yellow. Okay, we scroll down, and I'm just placing them right underneath each other. And we'll do that one, and we'll do one more. Okay, and then yeah, do that one. And I'm gonna make the browser fill kind of this last color we picked and add more scroll. I'll show you why I do that in a second. Okay, so we have five different panels. Uh, if we preview this in Adobe Muse by hitting Command Shift E, we can see the different colors there. Okay, so that looks nice. Um, now what we'll do is insert the iPhone image into the website. So I go into my folder and this is my iPhone image. Uh, to, to get the iPhone image, uh, you can Google um, iPhone PSD and you'll get a nice uh, PSD file with a different new iPhones on it and you can also find different versions of the iPhone images. Uh, after you find the, the PSD which is a Photoshop file you can crop the uh, the iPhone that you'd like to use and then save it as a PNG. Um, saving it as a PNG kind of keeps this uh, middle part empty or transparent so that you can place images in it or on it. It can also be white because the slideshow actually just goes on it um, but I like to, to have it transparent it's just um, it's just easier for me and yeah, either way works though. Okay, so there's our iPhone and I'm gonna place it right to the left uh, of the center point. Cause then it lets me have some text here. I can you know put some text here, or you know you can style it however you'd like. So yep, this is the iPhone here. Now let's preview this and see how it looks in the browser. I hit Command Shift E. And as you can see, it scrolls with the site. We don't want it to do that. We want it to stay fixed and let the, the, the background kind of slide. Um, but the iPhone will stay in place. So to, to make the iPhone stay in place, we just click on it. And right over here where it says pin, you click this top button. And now it's pinned. And it's, uh, it's another way of saying it's fixed. And it's, it's not going to move. So if I hit Command, Shift, E, we can see that iPhone stays in place. Okay, perfect. So now what we want to do is add a slideshow uh, image here and we want the slideshow to scroll vertically and change every 650 pixels. So to do that, we go to Object, Insert Widget, Slideshow, and Basic. And then we just click. And what we want to do is resize the slideshow so that it fits exactly in the iPhone. Okay, and right about right about there is good, maybe a little bit wider. 
Okay, we see a little green, maybe I can just... Okay, yep, that looks good. So now we, we want it so that we don't see any of the background, uh, any of the green, so that the slideshow covers that whole transparent, transparent area. Okay, so we don't need a caption or any of the forward back arrows or these numbers. So to change that, we just click on this blue arrow and where it says parts, you uncheck previous, next, captions, and counter. And if there's any other options that are displayed, you just uncheck them here in the parts area. Now you'll notice that when we uncheck those, we actually have some green showing here. So we wanna just resize the image again down, give it a little more height so that it fits perfectly within the iPhone. Okay, that looks good. Now if I preview this in the browser, Command Shift E, uh, we have the image in the iPhone, and if we scroll, oh, look at that, the uh, slideshow went up. Okay, we don't want it to do that. So to change that, you just click the iPhone and click the image. Uh, to click both at the same time, you hold down the Shift key, and then you just click on the slideshow. So now we have the, uh, the iPhone selected and the slideshow. And if we right click and click group, they're gonna be grouped together. So now if we go shift, um, you can see that the, the slideshow and the iPhone are now grouped and the slideshow inherited the iPhone's pin function. So now they're, they're both pinned and will not move. So again, command shift E and that's nice. Okay, you notice um, right now the slideshow is at autoplay. Uh, we don't want it to autoplay. So to take off the autoplay, we, we take that off. And for the transition, we want it to be a vertical transition. We don't want it to fade. So if I hit Command Shift E, uh, nothing is going to happen because the autoplays, uh, we said no autoplay, and we don't have the functionality to go left and uh, back and forward on the image. That's okay. I'm going to show you why in a second. Okay, so now we want to tell this slideshow to change every 650 pixels. So what we do is we click on the slideshow right there, make sure we have it selected. Um, you know it's selected when the little squares are around the, the slideshow and this little blue arrow is here. So then we go to scroll effects uh, right over here to the right, click on scroll effects. Um, you have motion, you have opacity, slideshow and edge animate. We wanna click on slideshow. Okay, um, let's see, we must not have it selected. Okay, now it's selected. All right, so just make sure it's selected properly. I guess it doesn't have to have the squares around it, but just to be selected. And then uh, after the slideshow is selected, you click slideshow right over here. And right over here, you'll see this button that says switch slides every blank. We want to select this button and we want to tell it to switch slides every 650 pixels. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Command Shift E. Okay, actually before we do that, um, let's just change these images here. I'm gonna delete, you just select, make sure the, the rectangle, the squares are around and just hit delete and delete. And then to add images, you click this blue circle with the arrow. Up here it says add images, click the folder. And I'm just gonna select a few of these images. Um, I selected six, I think we just need five, but we'll see. Okay, so now I have my custom images in there. I actually got those images from, um, if we go back to my brother browser, uh, I got it on unsplash.com. There's a bunch of free images that you can download and it says right here, free, do whatever you want, high resolution photos. Um, again, that's unsplash.com. I just downloaded them and I'm using this, using them for this tutorial. So now if I go to Command Shift E, uh, sorry, Command Shift E, and I scroll, you can see that the image changes. All right, now the image changes a little bit too late. See, we're scrolling. I want the image to change like right around here so that they can start reading the text that I have here and they can reference it to the image. See, it's too late. Like it almost starts on the next slide. So to change that, what we do is we click on the slide show and right up here, you can see there's this key position here. Um, if we set it to, to negative 200, 
what that means is that 200 pixels before the 650, it's actually going to switch the slide. So it's going to start earlier than hitting exactly at the 650 pixel mark. It's going to start 200 pixels earlier. So let's see how that looks. So I hit Command Shift E, and I'm going, going, and perfect. That's that's not bad. It switches right near the top of the image. So if I scroll again, right near the top, it changes. So that gives me space to kind of have this image on this panel, on this background with the text, and the user, the viewer, can reference this image to the text. I could even do a little bit earlier, let's say negative 250. And it's going to switch yep, right about there. That's nice. So as you scroll, the image changes. And very good. All right, now if we had more scroll space down here at the bottom, this image would change as well. So you just want to make sure that um, you end your image off in the correct way and that you have enough scroll space so that your iPhone changes um, or looks correct at the end of all the scrolling. And that would just take a little bit of playing with, but I'll let you uh, work with that. Okay, um, that's pretty much it for this video tutorial. Um, again, that's a very, it's a very interesting effect. You can have a nice app demo uh, for your website with Adobe Muse. Um, if you have any questions regarding this tutorial, uh, feel free to leave questions in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.